Last month was a pretty eventful month for Jaclyn Hill. From announcing the closure of her two brands, Jaclyn Roxanne and Cozy, to multiple people coming out and speaking out against her. We had Jen Gerard from Gerard Cosmetics speak out about her time working with Jacqueline. We had Marlena Stell speak up earlier this year about her experience working with Jacqueline. Then we had Kaylin Nicholson share her thoughts over Jacqueline closing Cozy and debunking Jacqueline's claims that she had messaged her, as well as Gabby Rose Makeup, who came out on Kendall Ray's podcast and explained her situation with Jacqueline stealing her trademarked brush name. Everyone who has spoken out has painted a very clear picture and pattern when it comes to Jacqueline in business. It seemed like Jacqueline didn't care who she stepped on and what brand she destroyed to reach the top and for some reason all of the people that she was stepping on were also successful women in business it's definitely been a long month of drama for Jacqueline and she's finally coming out to address some of it but not in the way that you're probably thinking it's a mess so let's get into it now, normally when Jacqueline responds to accusations or drama, she usually will do it on a video or on her Instagram, but Jacqueline decided to take a different approach this time. She actually made an account on her own snark Reddit and posted this huge paragraph trying to explain her side of what happened and even attached screenshots of text conversations and emails. I definitely was not expecting Jacqueline to ever make an appearance on her own Reddit page, but here we are. Jacqueline started off by responding to Jen's post that she made on Jacqueline's Reddit last week. Jacqueline wrote, Hey Jen, out of context, this sounds awful, so I'm sorry if the reasoning behind my email didn't make sense. I went through our conversations, sharing here for context, and the reasoning behind my request was I had noted that if you wanted to continue to use my name and likeness, I'd request an overall buyout versus monthly affiliates. As you know, I had made over $600,000 with you through my affiliates and creating lip products with you, so I was correlating the $250,000 payout with inventory left over only if you wanted to continue to use my name and likeness. I had noted, attached, that if you wanted to sell without my name and likeness, then we could separate amicably, which is what I also noted I preferred. In terms of how we ended, you did end up removing my name and likeness in connection with the product, so there was no need for the payment. We did reach out once as there wasn't active banner ads using my name and likeness years later, but that was it in terms of our conversations. Jacqueline then attached the emails between her and Jen. It starts off with an email from Jen which reads, Hi Jacqueline, this has been an overwhelming and emotionally draining situation for the both of us. I want nothing but the best for you and I don't don't want to stand in front of any of your opportunities and happiness and want a peaceful resolution to be reached. But it has to make sense for me and my business. I've given this situation a lot of thought and wholeheartedly feel that I compensated you generously for your efforts. I would greatly appreciate knowing the basis on which you feel that you should be compensated by an additional $250,000 and how you came to that amount. I need to understand what I get for giving you that or any other sum. So far, I'm not really seeing a picture being painted that was any different from what Jen already told us. All this is showing is that Jacqueline did in fact ask for money, and remember guys, Jen said that Jacqueline asked for the money even after removing her likeness from her website. Jen said that she had already removed Jacqueline's picture and anything associated with her from the product, and Jacqueline was still asking for the money. Jacqueline included a screenshot of her email response where Jacqueline says, Yes, you have always compensated me fairly. I have no problem with my commission in the past. I would prefer that you would take down all my products and move forward with no buyout. I'm not trying to take money from you for no reason. You know me better than that. If you want to continue business as usual and continue to sell my products, it will not be easy for me. My subscribers will be confused and it will definitely make it harder for me. My name and likeness will always be attached to these shades forever. There is nothing I can do about that. If you type my name on Google, Gerard Cosmetics pops up. And since I would prefer to totally detach my name and products, I think a buyout is very fair. I would like $50,000 for each shade and $100,000 for $19.95. We both know that $19.95 is a huge seller and people will never stop loving that shade. Again, if you're willing to remove all my products and my face from Gerard, I would much more prefer that. This is not about money to me. But if you're going to keep selling them and making money off of them, I think I should be compensated. Signed, Jacqueline. Maybe I'm missing something here, and please, if you guys see something that I'm not seeing, then 
Let me know in the comments, but I don't understand how this helps Jacqueline. It shows that Jacqueline ended the partnership out of nowhere, tried to get even more money from Jen so she could keep a product that Jen's lab formulated, produced, and packaged up for sale. Jen removed Jacqueline's name and likeness from the product. Jacqueline has no right to tell Jen to remove the color, let alone demand money if she didn't. What I was actually hoping to hear from Jacqueline was a reasoning for why she was okay with being friends with Jen, collecting affiliate checks from Jen, getting inside information on labs from Jen, all after the Karina Kaboom situation happened, but then one day, months later down the line, decided that she needed to cut ties over it. That's what people wanted to know. We wanted to know why she insinuated that she was cutting ties with Jen over the drama that happened on Snapchat and brought even more hate and damage to Jen's brand. It just seems so odd to me that she was okay with growing her own brand with the help of Jen and then once the Morphe money came in, she cut ties over this thing that happened months ago and never bothered her before. Jen ended up responding to Jacqueline's post and said, Dear Jacqueline, come on Jacqueline, it's me. I know your tactics and have been harmed by your greed. Well, I would be more than willing to accept a genuine apology. It is apparent that you are incapable of giving one. You are sorry if the reasoning behind your email didn't make sense. It made plenty sense, girl. And this is not how you apologize after spending years trying to destroy someone. I will not stand for the gaslighting or lies. We both know that you attempted to extort $250,000 after your face and name had already been removed from our website. The intention of your email is made clear by your actions at the time and since. We both know that you bashed me on Snapchat and every other chance you got both in comments and behind the scenes. Did you think no one would tell me that you were trying to block my opportunities? Not everyone is under your spell, Jacqueline. Some of us wake up, albeit some of us not until after you have ruled over us. You have a pattern of destroying other women in your path. You took extra pleasure in squashing me as punishment for not going along with your program. I am my own person and would not participate in the awful things you did to others. Your selfishness and greed have hurt myself, Gabby Rose, Merlena, Kaylin, Becca, and too many others. They have yet to come forward, but that is their story to tell and not mine. But you and I both know there are many more. Since an apology is only valid when followed by change behavior, Behavior, I will wait, but not hold my breath to see it. That's another thing. Jen said Jacqueline asked for the $250,000 after she removed Jacqueline's name and likeness from her website. Jacqueline was no longer attached to the shades in any capacity, so for her to want that much money for nothing does feel like extortion. As for Marlena, Jacqueline's response to what Marlena has been saying online is a little bit longer. Marlena and Jacqueline had a friendship, they had a business relationship, and the fact that Jacqueline cost Marlena's brand a million dollars in lost revenue over their collab was a massive loss. Marlena's brand ended up shutting down, and I'm sure that collab had something to do with it. Jacqueline got on her Reddit and she wrote, Marlena, our last exchange regarding the collaboration is attached. Up until the end of August 2018, I understood us to be on good terms as you had offered additional collaborations, expressed gratitude, and noted what seemed to be a positive response for the collaboration not continuing. I understood from speaking to you that you had got a plan in place for the palettes and shades and it wouldn't be an issue moving forward. If you had told me then that it would be a brand closing situation, we would have made it work. But from our phone conversations and email you wrote after, I truly thought it was fine. We did continue to work together in 2017 and into 2018. Your team even built a Jaclyn Hills favorite page for your site, which continued to be utilized for Makeup Geek sales. This should show you, I thought everything was good between us because I continued to support your brand. I can see where that is naive of me to think everything was okay, but hopefully that provides context to you on why I did. I did consider you a friend and have never denied the relationships you introed me to and don't plan to. I will say though, I did not work with a lab you think I did in Los Angeles for my lipsticks that you warned me about. I noted that to you when you posted a video saying that you warned me about the lab, but after that text clearing up I didn't use that lab, you blocked me. For reference, I actually work with the lab you introed me to and recommended to me based in Florida. End of August 2018, I came to you as you gave a statement to a drama channel around our 2015-2016 collaboration. Up until then, I was under the impression we were on overall good terms. 
I'm attaching that quick exchange. I'm not attaching other points as it involves names of other creators and I don't want to air out any of their information. At that point, you had told me your words had been twisted, but you did have hurt feelings around me due to our collaboration and me not reaching out as much. Granted, I think you understand why, given what I was going through personally, but I do admit I did a terrible job at being an overall friend to you and many others in my life at the time. I've removed a part of that convo, but can send it to you directly given it involves other creators. At the end, I asked what I could do to make it right, and we both agreed. We should have had these conversations years earlier at the time of us not continuing the collaboration or months after when the plan you had in place didn't work out. Versus two years later, I'm sharing a part of that conversation here. Again, happy to share all direct with you, but don't want to share publicly given it involves other creators. I shared with you I plan to do a video, attached conversation, and you shared that you were okay with that. We seem to be on good terms again, but then a few days later, instead of coming to me to tell me that you felt I didn't share things correctly, you went to Twitter instead. From your text, you felt I wasn't being honest, and I asked you to elaborate. You didn't at that time, but either way, you have the right to voice your opinion on any platform you want. I just wish as a friend in all this, you would have come to me first. I have never been someone to immediately go to the internet to speak on my friends without speaking to them about it and have always voiced my concerns privately first, including with us. However, we didn't have one issue that was addressed privately first in our friendship. Instead, I would see your public opinion on me on the internet, then I'd text you and you'd clear things up with me privately, and then it happened again. We did set up a phone call, but ended up not speaking because you cancelled the call. Then two weeks later, I got an update that someone on your team, or previously on your team, had leaked our emails around the collaboration. The one email I shared earlier was not included in those leaked emails. I do think it's an overall important email for others to see to make their judgment on my lack of understanding we had issues from early 2016 to mid 2018. I could obviously see where I was communicating poorly and there was a lot of back and forth, but there was also a lot of text and phone exchanges that weren't shared. We both agreed. There was some context missing on our communication. After our text conversation, I understood we were on good terms again and you sent me several nice texts over the holidays. I admit, in terms of checking in, you were a much better friend than me during that time. I was not in a good place and not a good friend to anyone with everything going on. After that, I didn't hear from you again after the holidays. Instead, six months later, I saw you spoke out publicly versus trying to reach out to me privately first. Then when I did try to speak to you, you blocked me. In the end, I recognize where the anger you both have comes from. If I could, I would now change and handle things differently, but I can't. Marlena, I've apologized to you several times in depth via phone, email, and text for the way our collaboration went down. At this point, it seems our private conversations aren't working, and so this is me publicly apologizing, joining a Reddit, and writing in a very public form where I know I'm not liked, and people in here will spend the time tearing every word apart. This is not me trying to have my fans jump in quickly for public support. I don't want anyone sending you hate. That won't make the situation better for anyone. I'm just trying to paint a clearer picture as to what went through from my perspective as well as take accountability. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life and my intention was never to hurt either of you. I hope you truly know that. However, even though it wasn't my intention, that's what happened and I apologize for that. I wish you both the best in terms of Jen continuing on with Gerard Cosmetics and Marlena with your new brand. So in terms of all the emails that Jacqueline attached, I'm going to go ahead and guess that she was trying to paint a picture that Marlena and her team were still cordial with her and express gratitude for the partnership and show that they had a very back and forth rocky relationship. I don't really know what Jacqueline wanted Marlena to say in those emails. Did she want her to drag her over email and call her names? I'm sure they had many back and forth in person trying to get this to all work out. It just got to a point where Marlena could no longer push it off any further and Jacqueline wouldn't pick a date. The emails that Marlena and Nick were sending when the collaboration ended were very professional. It doesn't mean that they still weren't hurt financially from it. Yeah, maybe Marlena did stay quiet about things for a little while and tried to keep on good terms with you, but then she probably noticed a very clear pattern of behavior with Jacqueline of her stepping all over other 
other women in business. Jacqueline also included a ton of screenshots of text exchanges between herself and Marlena, showing them going back and forth over the years, talking about things from each other's point of view, Jacqueline getting upset with Marlena whenever she would speak out publicly. Like, it's a lot. The main ones I'm going to go over are from Jacqueline getting upset with Marlena after she gave a statement to a drama channel about the cause for the failed Makeup Geek collab. Marlena told Jacqueline that she told this creator that their collab ended because of timing with Jacqueline and her Becca and Morphe projects and they ended on good terms. Jacqueline didn't feel like the drama channel video portrayed that and she was upset and called the video all lies. Marlena ended up responding to Jacqueline and got all her feelings out writing, if I'm being honest Jacqueline, on a personal level, I'm extremely hurt that over the years, I have never said anything ill of you and have always supported how I could. I gave you much info to help you start your brand and even gave direct names and labs to get you started. When you became close to blank, which is not a jealous thing whatsoever, that you toss me and Makeup Geek aside. You gave that info to her to use for Morphe. You and her were both at Prisha together and my team and I were there. You didn't see me because I was in the office. I texted you after seeing you in LA to ask if you wanted to meet even for a coffee. You blew me off, yet showed up to the lab I connected you with with another brand owner. It's not right. Even recently after your divorce, I was willing to fly to Florida to be a support during your rough time and you blew me off again. I know it's the personal side of things, but still is hurtful. I have more to say regarding your recent collapse and such, but it's not my place and I've stayed respectful of your business. I get questioned so much about you and it's hard to keep staying silent when I'm also taking bullets left and right. I hope you understand my point of view as well. I know you have to speak your truth because you're getting lots of heat. Please tell your mom I'm so sorry she's being dragged through this when she didn't do anything wrong and is so sweet. Once again, this is everything Marlena has said publicly. I really don't understand why Jacqueline thought this would clear her name or something. Jacqueline showed her response explaining her side of things, which said, I am very sorry that you have ever felt hurt by me. That was never my intention. I have a lot of feelings about what happened to us on a personal level, but I want you to know that I did not stop using Makeup Geek because of Morphe or because of money. I never asked for a sponsorship or a penny outside of my commission that I earned. I helped Nick set up your affiliate program and gave him advice about it constantly. I told him influencers wouldn't want to work with it because it was too complex. I genuinely cared about your brand and wanted to help. I got hate constantly because it was basically the only brand I was using, but the products that started launching a couple years ago weren't getting me excited anymore if I'm being totally honest. And you know I only use things I genuinely love. And then the next part is blanked out and then it says, that put a bad taste in my mouth and I distanced myself from you. Then you start hanging out with Blank and he started spreading info about me saying you were the source. That hurt me bad. At the end of all these messages that Jacqueline shared, it seemed like they both came to some sort of understanding and agreed that they should have had this conversation where they both air out their grievances ages ago. The next round of texts are from about a month or so later and they show Jacqueline upset with Marlena over her video where she aired out that influencers were charging $60,000 per video and also talked about her experience with the beauty community. I guess Jacqueline thought a lot of things that Marlena was saying in her video were aimed at her and she took issue with it. They went back and forth about the emails that were released between Jacqueline and Makeup Geek showing the downfall of their collab and the fact that Marlena thought Jacqueline was and being honest in the 2018 video she released trying to clear her name over a lot of drama that was surrounding her. This video detailed the problems with the Morphe Vault collection, the leaked Makeup Geek emails, and so much more. Marlena told Jacqueline that she felt like she wasn't being honest in this video and that started a whole new back and forth. I'm gonna have all the messages linked down below for you guys so you can thoroughly read through them and make your own opinion, but that's pretty much the gist of them. It just seemed like a lot of back and forth and issues that weren't being solved and honestly, a whole mess. Marlena did end up responding to Jacqueline coming out with all of this and she wrote, Jacqueline, although I appreciate you responding, 
I'm tired of the gaslighting you've always done as you cherry pick parts of a conversation to fit a narrative that suits you. We spoke after I found out you had taken Linda to all my manufacturers I connected you with, not just one. I've known since right after your lipsticks launch which lab you used because my vendors all told me and I knew anyways when I saw the pictures you posted inside that facility. When our collab fell through, I wasn't trying to harbor hard feelings, even though I knew the financial wreckage that would fall out. I took that hit in silence and made the best situation I could from it because I knew I should have made you sign that contract. But I trusted you as a friend, not just for business. Hard lesson that I'm glad I learned as it made me a wiser person today, so I'm grateful for that lesson. It wasn't the financial devastation that hurt the most anyways. It was the betrayal of you using me to get information and sharing that with a competitor, then kicking me to the curb. I told you this privately, Jacqueline, before I ever spoke out publicly, and your response was, what do you want me to do, Marlena? That's not a real apology. So much happened after those texts that opened my eyes long before we got to today. I was called by Becca's lawyers and found out you stole their packaging concept and used with Morphe. I found out from many of my vendors that you brought Linda to all of them. I found out you lied about pulling palettes mislabeled as vegan and suddenly restocking. I found out you lied about Jacqueline Cosmetics even being your brand. I could go on with the lies I found out later, but that would require a novel be written. My eyes are now open to the person I thought I knew versus the person you actually are. I felt like a fool believing what you said versus what you were actually doing behind closed doors. You've had the opportunity for years to contact me privately. My email has been the same. I have multiple social media accounts and there's even a contact button on the Makeup Geek site that you could have used, but it's been silent. Just like you stated, you contacted Kaylin as well, but you didn't. I'm tired of the gaslighting and lies, Jacqueline. I wish you no ill will and have finally gotten the closure I need by speaking up. I'm tired of seeing other women hurt as well. Until your actions align with your words, they are just that, hollow words. So, wow, a lot to take in here, but overall, I don't exactly understand what these messages and what Jacqueline's whole post was trying to prove. If anything, the screenshots just prove that both Jen and Marlena have been very honest and upfront about their interactions with Jacqueline and what happened. If anything here, I was hoping that we'd actually hear a genuine apology from Jacqueline that isn't followed with a but or an excuse. Could you imagine if Jacqueline actually got on video and actually apologized for what she did to these brands and was honest about maybe chasing the most money and not caring who she stepped on to get there? I think people would respect that a whole lot more than whatever this whole thing was. I was also hoping to see some kind of apology to Kaylin. The fact that Jacqueline lied about messaging Kaylin in her video and couldn't even address Kaylin by name was very cowardly and not a real explanation or an apology. I think Kaylin deserves so much more than that, but I really don't think she's gonna get it from Jacqueline. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about everything down below. Can you see Jacqueline's side here from these emails that she shared, or are you extremely confused what she's trying to prove by them and still side with Marlena and Jen? Let me know and I'll see you next time.